Welcome back to the center of it all. It's that time of year when the kids are going back to school and Mel has the perfect recipe for Meatloaf Monday. What do Taco Tuesday, Wing It Wednesday, Spaghetti Thursday, and Pizza Friday have in common? You've got kids, they just went back to school, you needed a weeknight meal plan, and I shared recipes for all of them with you, except one, Meatloaf Monday. Join me while I make my twist on a not-so-ho-hum meatloaf dinner. Mexican style beef and chorizo sausage meatloaf with Mexican style adobo rice. I'm gonna start by sauteing a few vegetables for our meatloaf, and I'm melting three tablespoons of salted butter in a non-stick skillet. I'm going to add one cup each of red and green bell pepper. One cup of green onions or scallion. And two cups of corn kernels. I'm gonna season these with two teaspoons of sea salt, two teaspoons of black pepper, a tablespoon of chili powder, and a tablespoon of ground cumin. I'll stir all these around, get them coated in the spices, butter, and I'm gonna let these saute for about three to four minutes. I'm not gonna overcook them. I just want them nice and crunch tender. It's been a full three minutes. And my vegetables are perfect. I'm gonna turn my heat down really low and I'm gonna stir in a cup of minced cilantro. And we want to stir the cilantro throughout the vegetables and let it steam for about a minute. We don't really want to cook the cilantro. I'm just gonna turn the heat off on this. I'm gonna pick this up and I'm gonna take it back to the counter and I'm gonna set it aside for about 20, 25 minutes so it can cool a little bit. And as soon as I get back, we're gonna start simmering our Mexican adobo rice. Mexican style adobo rice is a meatless Mexican side dish. I'm gonna start by heating my pan over medium heat and I'm gonna add some natto oil about two tablespoons. And all that is is vegetable oil that's been colored with natto seeds, and it's going to give the rice that signature yellow-orange color that's common to Mexican co cooking. I'm gonna season my oil with adobo spice mix, which is common to Mexican cooking, it's loaded with garlic and Mexican oregano, jalapeno pepper powder to give it some heat, some cumin and some sea salt. So you start by seasoning your oil. Now I'm going to add a cup of diced sweet onion. that saute in the seasoned oil for a minute or two, maybe three. I don't want to brown the onion. I just want to make it nice and soft and tender. Now I'm going to add my rice and I've got two cups of extra long grain you can use long grain, but no short grain or medium grain rice for this dish. And we're gonna add two full cups of rice. We're gonna toss that around. We want every last grain to be coated in oil. And we'll 
going to lower this heat a little bit. And we're going to continue to cook this for about two more minutes till the rice kind of takes on. We're not browning it, but we want a nice little bit of a nutty fragrance. That's looking great. Smelling even better. And now I'm going to add two cups of diced tomatoes. These are regular canned tomatoes. I'm using fire roasted diced tomatoes. They're undrained. You want them with all their liquid. And adobo rice commonly contains tomatoes and corn. The corn, however, the corn kernels, which I have set aside, when the rice is fully cooked and we rake through it with the fork, you add the corn at the last minute. Tomatoes are heated through, and now it's time for three cups of vegetable stock. It's a vegetarian dish. This is a meatless, rice dish. Turn the heat up to high. Give this a stir. Take out your spoon. Let that come to a boil. Rice is approaching a full boil. I'm going to put a lid on it, and I really like to use a saucepan with a glass top lid so that I can keep an eye on the process. I'm going to turn my heat down to a medium low, and I'm going to walk away from this. I'm going to let this simmer for about 22 to 24 minutes. We're going to move over to the counter, and we're going to mix up our meatloaf. Every meatloaf starts with a binder, which is a bread product, and I use saltine cracker crumbs, just coarse crumbs, instead of fresh bread crumbs, just because I like the flavor and the texture. I've crushed four ounces or one sleeve of some saltines, and I'm going to add a cup of milk. Then I'll just set this off to the side here so that the uh, crackers can absorb the milk and the crackers are gonna soften and it's gonna get to be a nice pasty mixture. And for our meat, we're gonna start with two pounds of lean ground beef. This is 85-15, you can use 90-10, but you don't wanna go with too much more fat than that. I've got one pound of Mexican chorizo sausage, and there is a difference. The recipe calls for Mexican chorizo. You want to use the soft sausage, because if the recipe calls for Spanish chorizo, they're implying a dry version of a sausage, similar to like a salami or a pepperoni. Next, before I get my hands all dirty, I'm going to lightly whisk two eggs. I'm using extra large eggs. Just break the yolks. And there's only one way to do this, and that's with your hands, and it's messy, so take off any jewelry you're wearing. You really don't need to be cleaning that out of your rings. And just start mixing the chorizo into the ground beef. Okay, that's mixed in. Now, we're going to 
add all of our pasty bread mixture. And see how fast that happened? It absorbed all the milk. Last but not least, still warm, but are cooled, cooled enough to touch vegetable mixture. Great way to get vegetables into your kids' dinner with zero complaints. All right, that's all mixed. I'm gonna take a minute to wash my hands and when we come back, we'll get these into the pan and into the oven. It's an optional step, but it works great. If you've got a kitchen scale, now is the time to use it. It's really easy dividing this mixture in half to be off by five, six, or seven ounces. And what I have today are two identical size meatloaves that are three pounds each. two standard size loaf pans that have been sprayed with no stick spray. And I'm just gonna begin. Don't dump it all in at once because a trick to a really great meatloaf is to put it in and pat it down as you go. It's gonna cook evenly and it's gonna bake up beautifully. If you just plop it in there, you're never going to get a really pretty meatloaf. Mound it a little towards the center. That looks great. I'm going to put the second one in the pan and then I'm popping them into a 350 degree oven uncovered for exactly an hour and 15 minutes. And when they come out, we're going to eat. Making time to cook dinner on a school night is a labor of love, but it has its rewards. It slows down the whole crazy world. Conversations can happen, and jokes can be told too. Cooking with your kids or for your entire family is just plain fun. Have a great school year, everyone. For these and all of my recipes, just go to my website. Your family will be looking forward to Mondays if you're making this meatloaf. And I, for one, am excited to try this rice. But when we come back, we'll be taking a look at a new stadium at one of the local high schools.